The strong do not teach others. The strong lead by example. Today, consider yourself a success, and whatever you do in life, you should always see it through to the end. Everyone must have a goal in life, and you should try to reach it, even if you fail, and they tell you that you will never amount to anything. Don't listen to them. Don't give up. Keep working hard and believe in yourself. What you think about, so you will be. Ken Norton was a professional African-American boxer and considered one of the greatest boxers of all time. He was only the second boxer to be victorious over the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Ali once said, Ken Norton is the best boxer I ever fought with. In his career, Ken Norton has fought boxers such as George Foreman, Randall Kopp, Larry Holmes, and many others. He won the World Heavyweight Championship. He was known for his unusual cross-arm defensive stance and was just as deadly when it came to attacking. His style of continually pressing forward was complemented by his super powerful jabs. His left hooks and right overhand were equally effective and Norton considered them his most damaging moves. These skills and his unmatched strength clearly contributed to an incredible 33 knockout wins in his career. Welcome! Subscribe to our channel where we publish the most interesting stories from the world of sports and boxing. Click the like button and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Now, we will talk about one of the most famous heavyweights who inscribed his name in boxing history, Ken Norton, nicknamed Black Hercules. Ken Howard Norton, also famous as Black Hercules, the Jaw Destroyer and the Combat Marine, was born in Jacksonville, Illinois in the United States on August 9, 1943. Being a naturally gifted athlete, in 1960 he was selected to play defense on the state football team. He attended Jacksonville High School, and in 1961, the school athletics coach sent Ken Norton to compete in eight track competitions, of which he won six and finished second in two. This laid the foundation for the Ken Norton rule, which limited a student to a maximum of four track and field competitions. He attended the University of Northeast Missouri and studied elementary education, intending to become a teacher or a police officer in the future. Ken Norton's boxing career began when he joined the United States Marine Corps. He served from 1963 to 1967, graduating from NCTC Corey Station, Pensacola, Florida, in communication interception. During his time in the Marine Corps, Ken won all three Marine Corps heavyweight titles and set a record of 24 victories with two defeats. Norton started his professional boxing career in 1967, winning his first fight against Grady Brazell on November 14. Ken won his first 16 pro fights before suffering his first defeat by knockout to Jose Luis Garcia on July 2, 1970. From 1970 to 1972, Norton fought 13 fights, winning each of them, predominantly by knockout. Among the defeated fighters was Steve Carter, James Woody, Charles Harris, and others. But his first truly high-profile fight was a confrontation against boxing legend Muhammad Ali at the San Diego Sports Arena on March 31, 1973. Norton delivered not only Ali's second-ever defeat, but he also won the bantamweight title with a score of 31. March 31st, 1973, San Diego, USA. Muhammad Ali versus Ken Norton. This was Norton's first significant fight. For his last match against Charlie Reno, Norton had received only $300. Despite any perceived difference in their skill levels, Norton had been Frazier's sparring partner and was well prepared for a fight with Ali. In the second round, Ken delivered an accurate shot into Muhammad's jaw and broke it. The doctor in Ali's corner wanted to stop the fight immediately, but the boxer wouldn't let him.
The fight lasted 12 rounds and Ali lost by split decision. The doctor who operated on Muhammad's jaw would later say that he could not understand how he boxed with such an injury. Hearing this, many people began to spread rumors that Ali's career was coming to an end and that he was no longer able to put up a good fight in the ring. Despite these rumors, after recovering for six months, Ali met with Ken Norton again. September 10, 1973, Inglewood, USA. Ken Norton versus Muhammad Ali, fight number two. Norton was in excellent shape before the second fight of their trilogy, while Ali trained relentlessly to bring his physique back into shape. At the beginning of the battle, Ali and Norton were fit and full of energy. But Ali showed his physical endurance, moving without a pause and standing between rounds. Norton came out aggressively early in the fifth round, delivering a flurry of punches and forcing Ali to become more defensive. In the final round, Ali dominated with combinations. Although the fight was equal, Muhammad Ali won by a controversial split decision. After the fight, Ali said, I am more tired than usual, but that's just because of my age. Ali's victory in the rematch with Norton paved the way for his second fight with Frazier, but that's another story. Let us know in the comments if you want to see a video on Joe Frazier. March 1974, Caracas, Venezuela. George Foreman versus Ken Norton. The Black Hercules met in the ring with the then undefeated world champion George Foreman who was known for his crazy punching power. The fight didn't last long. Foreman began to slowly push Norton back, attacking with his front hand. At the beginning of the second round, the champion delivered an uppercut that sent Ken into the ropes, knocking him down. Soon after, Norton is knocked out. Three months after his fight with Foreman, Ken returned to the ring with a bright victory over a medium caliber boxer, Boone Kirkman and soon he went to fight one of the most famous 70s heavyweight contenders, Jerry Corey. 24th, 1975, New York, USA. Ken Norton versus Jerry Quarry. Despite being defeated by the best boxers of the day, Jerry had an impressive set of victories and was a favorite with the public. Norton's fight with Jerry was for the vacant NABF heavyweight title. The meeting turned out to be extremely competitive and short-lived with both boxers on the verge of falling at any moment. In general, Ken Norton was effective with direct strikes from long range, while Quarry's strengths were more up close. At the beginning of the fight, Norton inflicted a cut over Quarry's right eye, and by the fifth round, Quarry had vision problems. At the end of the fifth round, after another attack by Ken, at the ropes, the referee stopped the fight. Ken's next seven fights were successful from 1975 to 1976, where he won victory after victory. August 14, 1975, St. Paul, Minnesota, USA. Ken Norton versus Jose Luis Garcia, the rematch. Four and a half months after defeating Quarry, fate gave Norton a chance to get revenge for his first defeat at the hands of Jose Luis Garcia who by that time had become the heavyweight champion of Venezuela. This time, Ken simply destroyed his opponent with blows to the liver, repeatedly sending Garcia to the floor of the ring. He knocked out Jose in the fifth round. This was followed by another series of successful confrontations against Pedro Lavelle, Ron Stander, and Larry Middleton. September 28, 1976, New York, New York, USA. Ken Norton versus Muhammad Ali, fight number three. At stake were the WBA, WBC, and the ring heavyweight titles. Ali had not lost since their second fight. However, he had started to lose some of his prime physical conditioning, becoming more overweight. Shortly before the fight, he promised though he would knock out Norton in five rounds. Ali immediately took center of the ring and fought aggressively. Norton moved forward while throwing powerful punches. Ali received a lot of extra punches due to his open stance while ridiculing his opponent. Ken believed that he won most of the rounds, but in the end, the judge's decision favored Ali. 
Norton believed he was robbed of the victory, and he felt that he won nine or ten of the rounds, and felt he could go further. Ali said that he felt that he had enough to win, but candidly a month later in an interview with Mark Cronin, he said that Ken's fighting style was too difficult for him, and he was unsure he would win the third fight. But the judges gave the victory to Ali, and he was grateful to them for that. Ken had again lost through a controversial decision, and went on though to win the next fight against Dwayne Bobby. Interviewer Frank Lotierzo later asked Norton how the fight with Ali affected him. Norton answered, I lost my edge for boxing. I didn't put as much into it as I did before. I didn't run as far. I didn't train as hard. I didn't eat correctly. I started drinking a little bit every now and then. Of one to ten, I put in about a five. I felt that no matter what I did, that they would do what they wanted anyway. Norton also explained, a lot of it was the mental part of it. Ali defeated everyone mentally first. With Frazier, Ali had him so mad, Joe was trying to kill him with every shot. With Foreman, he tried killing him with every shot. Mentally, Ali could not defeat me, and physically I felt as much as a physical power as Ali was. He couldn't upset me in any way, and plus, I had Eddie Fuchs. Eddie knew how to fight Ali. You can't go to the head with him. You have to go to the body first, and then eventually he will bring his hands down and lower his head. In 1977, Norton fought and defeated Jimmy Young in a challenge for the WBC World title. However, Leon Spinks owned the champion title and refused to fight Norton, choosing a rematch with Muhammad Ali instead. As a result, the WBC removed the title from Spinks, and on March 18, 1978, transfers it to Ken Norton, who would then fight Larry Holmes in a title match. Las Vegas, USA, 1978, Ken Norton versus Larry Holmes. These 15 rounds between Ken Norton and Larry Holmes became some of the best in the history of boxing. The younger, faster Holmes tried to avoid the same mistakes made by Muhammad Ali in his first fight with Norton. So he did not stand in front of Norton and did not linger at the ropes. Holmes won the beginning of the fight, while Norton became stronger in the middle and the second half. The fight turned out to be energetic and dramatic. And at the end of the 13th round, Holmes shocked Norton and won the close fight. The fight has reached high positions with many boxing publications, ranking it as one of the best championship fights in history. And Larry Holmes would go on to hold the title for many years and put his name amongst the greatest heavyweights. In 2009, he acknowledged the fight with Ken Norton as the toughest fight of his career. 1979, Las Vegas, USA. Ken Norton vs. Ernie Shavers. The Black Hercules vs. The Black Destroyer, whose major strength was the destructive power of his punches. Norton was again at the top of the WBC rankings. Already in the middle of the opening round, Shavers manages to pin Ken to the ropes and shake him. A few seconds later, Shavers had Norton in the corner and knocked him down. Ken got up, but Ernie immediately sent him to the canvas, and the referee stopped the fight. More frequent defeats marked the general decline of Ken Norton's career. His next fight with Scott Ledoux ended in a draw, with Norton citing poor preparation on his part. In 1980, Norton's manager passed away, and Ken announced his retirement. But a few months later, he returned to the ring. In November 1980, he won a tough fight against the unbeaten Randall Tex Cobb, who had earlier broken Ernie Shaver's jaw. Norton's last fight was against Jerry Cooney in 1981. Jerry was 11 years younger than Ken. Cooney defeated Norton off the ropes in the first round. In his professional career, Ken Norton fought 50 fights, winning 42 of them. For several years, Ken Norton worked as a commentator and acted in films. His filmography includes films like Mandingo and Drum as well as bit parts in a dozen other productions, including the series A-Team, Knight Rider, and the TV movie Oceans of Fire. 
Norton was a public figure until 1986, when fate intervened. On February 14, 1986, Norton was in a car accident near Los Angeles, resulting in a broken skull, jaw, and leg, as well as speech issues and memory loss. Authorities found no trace of alcohol and drugs in the boxer's blood. Doctors told Norton that he would no longer be able to walk and talk, but his fighting spirit ignored the negative predictions, and he made a recovery. Norton said, At first they thought I might die, and if I didn't die, I wouldn't be coherent. They thought that even if I could talk, I'd be a cripple. Now, I'm talking in a walk-in, and I can even chew gum at the same time. Norton was married three times with four children. One of his sons achieved considerable success in American football, and the other, like his father, served in the Marine Corps. The last years of his life revealed serious health problems, including cancer and heart problems. The 70-year-old Ken Norton passed away on September 18, 2013, from heart failure. Ken Black Hercules Norton was a polite and decent person who treated everyone with respect and refused to disparage his opponents. He was elected to the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1992 and was inducted into the United States Marine Corps Hall of Fame in 2004. The 1998 holiday issue of The Ring magazine ranked Norton 22 among the 50 greatest heavyweights of all time. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future videos. See you soon.